alongside partner in crime, couldn't do it without him, Cody Maurice Dolget. How the hell you doing, Cody? Hello, darling. I'm doing wonderful this evening. Uh, so we have so much to go over tonight. I'm so excited. We really do. We shouldn't waste much time. It's January 31st when we do this live. It's the last day of January. And even though my birthday's in January, after my birthday, there's always a little bit of January blues that mm -hmm. kind of like wah, wah. And the, you know, we live in a colder environment and I'm always reminded of that. And so I just feel like, okay, let's move on to February. It's time to like, move on for the oh i feel let's get, that you right do you not feel oh, that oh definitely and tomorrow's the first day of black history month too i would be remiss if i didn't say that so yes i cannot wait for february i really can't actually wait for march quiet is kept but <laughs> at least we have something to look forward to yeah a lot of good things happening in february black history month like you mentioned it's our uh we will be celebrating seven years of podcasting uh coming up in a couple of weeks so uh, we're going to be doing announcing some really cool things with that we are in front of a live virtual audience i see some familiar faces like doug and bryce hello 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 keep coming with those comments put your comments in that area and we will get to either if you have something to say comment on a hot topic or ask us a question we are here all night for you or at least the next hour and we're very excited <laughs> about that i was like and i gotta give my whole night oh my god <laughs> <laughs> i mean it wouldn't be the worst thing it wouldn't be the worst thing honestly i love chatting with everybody here especially bryce and doug and everybody that's going to be here soon so thank you guys Speaking about checking in with everybody and how we're doing, of all people, I don't know if you call them people, but Elmo, Elmo, yes, we are a gay sex podcast, you all. <laughs> we're talking about Elmo and not cosplay. Elmo, last yesterday, asked the question on X, formerly known as Twitter, how is everyone doing? And it he quickly became the world's therapist. And when Elmo took to X formerly known as Twitter to ask how we were all doing, he probably wasn't expecting millions of people to respond to him, but this is what happened. And you can imagine all of the harsh and crazy things that came about since he asked that question. Be careful what you ask, I say, Cody, because a lot of people were actually said how they were doing and said things like we are in a state of a world right now that is not for us they talked about all the crazy things that somebody florida politician jared moskowitz tweeted not well i serve in congress that's really not great when your congressman <laughs> says something like that uh the world is burning around us uh as somebody else said, every morning I cannot wait to go back to sleep. Every Monday I cannot wait for Friday to come. Every single day and every single week for life, another user wrote. There was a lot of tweets referencing the unprecedented response to this initial question, as you can imagine. It brings up a lot, and at the very end of it, I don't know that the people behind Elmo expect where this actually grew and why they decided to do it. But Elmo came back and said, well, Elmo was glad he asked. Elmo learned that it is important to ask a friend how they are doing. Elmo will check in again, friends. Elmo loves you and hashtag emotional well-being. A couple things to say on this, Cody, a lot of things to say on this. One of which little known fact about me is when I was an actor in Los Angeles, I took this side gig hustle job where I would work for this woman and we would go to parties and I would dress up in all kinds of costumes. Sometimes I was Spider-Man. Not and Elmo, I, right? I was Elmo. Elmo. I was what? Elmo. And at the time, I didn't know a whole lot about Elmo. I was like, he talks like this. And <laughs> the costume. Please talk like that the rest of the show, please. <laughs> You want me to talk like this the whole show? And I literally, the costume was larger than life. And I was driving in my little Honda Civic, Civic around LA County 
even beyond LA County. And in my Honda Civic that was like on literally a Flintstones car, it was going to break down any second. And I was going to all these parts of LA that I never had heard of. And we're talking even the day of that booklet. I forget what that booklet was called, but it was before we had our phones even. And I forget what it was called, but you had to look this book up to find out where you were going and they would print out the directions where I was going and I would have to talk like that and be Elmo, somebody that I didn't grow up with, Elmo. I grew up with Sesame Street, but not Elmo. Yeah, he was creative. Sesame Street, not Elmo. And exactly. Anyway, that's just a little known fact, but I have to say, I do think the takeaway from all of this is when we were talking about it in our meeting today is when you, we really do need to check in. I mentioned at the top of the show that winter blues, it's a real thing. January can be uh, sometimes a darker time for a lot of people. Taxes are coming up. It's a new year. Maybe you have created some resolutions that you already have left behind You're trying to figure out and navigate the year ahead still at this point. And I think the takeaway for me is to ask your friends really and truly, how are you doing? And when you ask that question to take a beat and really let that person answer. And we kind of did that exercise without even thinking about this when we had our meeting. We often do this in our meeting on Wednesdays when we get together, even before we have all the stuff we have to navigate through, but we often take that beat and ask each other. And today we did, and yeah. we're not going to go into what we talked about, but <laughs> I'm just that's saying. Private. <laughs> that's private. But what do you think about how this went viral, Elmo, and the question, how is everyone doing? Well, I agree with you. We had a great meeting, and I think the start of it being what it was, us just checking in with each other made it even better. It made us connect a little bit more. We were, I feel like, on the same page. So please just check on check on your friends. As far as Elmo goes, I do not think that Elmo knew what he was getting himself into. <laughs> <laughs> These people went crazy on Elmo. They, they, they were like, Elmo, you asked, so we're going to tell you how we're really doing. And it was... It was very eye opening because I feel like a lot of the responses kind of told us where we were as a as a society, really. We're not I feel like we aren't really doing okay. I feel like we are in a space where so many things have happened to us as a whole that we really should take this time and take a beat and see how this response has affected us and uh, this question has affected us and how we really are not doing okay just one person asking us how we're doing and then we're reflecting on all the things that make us not okay i feel like when we take that into consideration then we should really just look at it and look at our society and say we need help we need to see a therapist. We need to have group therapy with all everybody on one Zoom call and so we can talk about our feelings and see what's going on. But I think that Elmo really did a good deed. So I'm I'm so happy. Me too. I'm 100% with whoever created this moment with Elmo. I just think, thank you, Elmo, for asking us. And I just go back to my takeaway that ask and check in with your friends and when you do ask them take that beat to really hear what how they are doing you know i think a lot of us throw that oh how you doing oh great so anyway i wanted to call you to talk about blah 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 blah, and blah, blah 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 and it's like you're really not checking in with your friends and you we need to check in with our friends oftentimes and really take that moment and that beat and Bryce watching us live says collectively, we are not okay. And now Elon Musk is implanting chips in our brains. And then there's that. So yeah, (laughs) point taken, got it. One thing I want to know though, I wonder how much Elmo charged per hour because I'm looking for a good therapist right now. (laughs) Hey, um, I I think he's kind of off the radar right now. Um, (laughs) He had an emotional dump and he can't take us anymore. Maybe try Miss Piggy. (laughs) Maybe try Miss Piggy instead or Kermit. Okay. Oh, wow. Well, I had a joke for that, but I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, we were alluding to this the other day on episode 536 and the Atlantis cruise, which has just disembarked from its Oasis Royal Caribbean cruise of the seas that was from January 21st to, through 28th had at least or had another passenger die recently. And it's very sad to report on this. And a spokesperson for Royal Caribbean Lines confirmed the death in a statement. Uh, I can confirm that we had a death on board and that was unexpected and not suspicious. And somebody, I was looking at X or Twitter the other day and there was a woman that was asking about her brother to wonder if it was actually her brother. And she knew that her brother had died. And she said, my brother was 36 from Chicago, was on the Atlantis cruise that's happening right now. And she said, my brother died Wednesday morning around 3 a.m. And really what she wanted to know was, was he alone? or was he at least oh, around wow. anybody? And somebody actually said, I can report back, and I know this is sad, is I'm paraphrasing, but they can say that they think that it was a fentanyl-laced ecstasy tab. And this is just not confirmed, I wanna put that out there, but it's what somebody actually reported back to this sister that was asking about their brother that had actually Passed, And what we can say is there was at least five instances on the cruise. And if you know anything about a cruise, you never really want to hear this is when you hear over the loud intercom alpha, 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 that is actually an issue that says there's some medical emergency happening currently. And so you don't want to hear that. <laughs> and sadly, they did. This had 5,200 guests aboard this Atlantis cruise. And Atlantis is no stranger to deaths on their cruise. Back in 2022, they had a, a death was confirmed with a rep describing it. And this is how they described it at the time in 2022 as nothing out of the ordinary. I'm not sure why that was the statement to be stated at the time. A death is nothing out of the ordinary. In 2020, 20, 2020 a 46-year-old Florida man died after jumping 20 stories from the Oasis of the Seas. And in November, two people reportedly died while aboard an Atlantis cruise. And, you know, it's just, as somebody, Cody, that is about to embark on a Caribbean cruise myself, going mm -hmm. on the Vakaya cruise line, I hope that I don't see any of these things happen on this cruise and that, um, you know, I wanted to read one last thing too, because when we were talking on episode 536, Sinfully, who listens to us uh, fairly a, a lot, he's an avid listener, he wanted to say what you were saying, Cody. He says, at Cody, I'm in all... I'm in all the Atlantis groups from where I went on the from where I went on the cruise last year and people and I'm in this group were saying that people had the testing strips on the ship. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. the extracurricular are are a big part of party culture and I think a lot of people are unaware of all the resources that are out there. So in other words, they actually did, because we were talking about this on episode 536, about having more testing strips out there. And he's saying they were out there, according to his sources, but that it's just because it's so big, a big part of our culture, the drugs mm -hmm. on circuit culture, that maybe it's not really getting out there. Or maybe, I don't know, what are your thoughts? I don't, you know. Yeah, <clears throat> I... So first and foremost, I want to say that thank you, Sinfully, for writing in and for letting us know that the fentanyl strips are available on the boat. But as you said, it's such a big part of the hookup culture and the party culture that <clears throat> maybe it's not so known or widespread, or maybe it should be more upfront. Maybe it should be right in our faces so that we know that Th these resources are available to us for us to protect ourselves. And I think that this instance that happened on the boat is kind of, it's super wild. And I was saying, as I was saying on um, the past episode, I think it was, what was it again? It was five. Uh, 36. Where, where, 
536 that we have to do our due diligence and make sure that we are doing what we can to protect ourselves. And uh, I, I think it's just really kind of suspicious to me that they said that they said nothing suspicious happened and then they went further on to say that it wasn't out of the ordinary both of those things bring up alarms in my head as far as people's deaths i think that it's kind of ludicrous for people to be talked about so cavalierly and without kind of respect and i i just think that it's it's we shouldn't take all of this so lightly it, all of this should be a a warning call to our community to everybody out there because it's not just us that is getting that are passing away from fentanyl and it's become it, it's just rampant out there in the culture so and i don't want to yuck anybody's um whatever they do out there because i've done my things as well. But I think that this is something that we need to be watching out for because it is becoming such a, a, a commonplace thing for, for people to be to pass away from fentanyl. Yeah. And I hear exactly what you're saying and where I think the messaging isn't really getting out there. And what Sinfully is really saying is they did provide a lot of this. I think mm -hmm. This particular cruise that's been going on for years and years and is known to be the more quote unquote party cruise, the mm -hmm. Caribbean Atlantis cruise that happens every year now is known to be that more of the party central cruise. And that's fine. And no, it's okay. I mean, hey, I've been on it once before and great. And I just think one death is one too many deaths. And when Amen. you're, yes. can, when you have a company that is known for this happening and we can cite several years consecutively of similar incidences happening, that this is becoming a more serious issue. And whether it needs to be like actual, you know, when you go on these cruises, one of the things that you do from the get go is you have a whole safety protocol on where, on, you know, where are your exits and where are your life, life jackets and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Maybe this needs to be a part of that whole procedure at first too. And so that to really ingrain it, they have screens in every single TV, even on the Bakaya cruise where, you know, maybe there needs to be more information on those screens running on a loop because there's constant video loops that are happening about fun stuff. Maybe you put that on there too. And then the other thing I would say is that, um, in addition to having all this information out there is, well, I mean, those are the main things that I think yeah. that, you know, they should probably implement so that we don't continue to see these horrible th atrocities happen to our community. And, oh, I know what I was going to say okay. is that we were saying in our meeting too, that I think the education is re isn't really out there yet of, because according to the, person that passed away, someone speculated that it was a ecstasy tablet that the person took. And mm -hmm. I'm just making this up, but I'm wondering, do people realize that fentanyl is actually in these tablets as well? A lot of people yeah. think that it's only in powdery substances. And is the information really getting out there that it's also put in ecstasy tablets and that you actually need to figure test those tablets that you may potentially be taking as well. And that's another thing to consider too. So. Yeah, I totally hear that. And I think that this all needs to be more widespread as far as information is concerned. We should definitely have the testing strips in bars and just to go a step further from what you were talking about with the crews, maybe they should give them out in their welcome packets. And that should be, if, I mean, if it's something that's known that goes on in the culture for the cruise, this should definitely be a part of it. So, and it's not, it's not to advocate for this, to, for doing drugs on the ship, but it's to keep people safe at the end of the day. And that's what we need to be more, most concerned about is making sure that people are alive at the end of the cruise. That's, it's just, it's becoming way too we, we report on this all the time. So I think it's yeah. way too commonplace. I can't.
Absolutely. Um, what's some, any comments we got before we move on? Bryce says, is it worth trying e ecstasy? Uh, we're not going to talk about that on this show. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Call <Yeah>. me Bryce. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, Love let's, you. <laughs> let's switch gears to a platform that you and I have both used before, and I'm talking about Sniffies. And Sniffies recently unveiled a brand new section to if you're using it it's a new feature from sniffies which helps you browse without exposing yourself to people who you are around and i kind of like this already it's called do you like this already oh, cody because yeah. yeah oh yeah um they write ever find yourself being horny while working out at the gym in the middle of a shift at work riding the subway visiting boring family members well Sniffies has a solution for you. And this week, the popular app introduced a brand new that, uh, a brand new feature called Vanilla Mode. With a quick and simple toggle in the app setting menu, you can turn on Vanilla Mode and keep browsing without worrying about explicit explicit pictures showing up on the map. This means that all explicit photos are blurred out, making your experience of using Sniffies in front of others and people in public a bit more private. I am not mad at this, Cody, and mm -hmm. I'm assuming you're really not mad at it because <laughs> I've been around you, Cody, where you have this thing on your screen. I mean, okay. I'm acting like it's this major thing, but it's you cannot see to the left or right of Cody's phone because he I has this screen. Privacy screen, and I'm like, what's he? I know what you're looking at, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what I'm looking at. <laughs> I know what you're looking at, but what do you think about this as a city dweller and always on the subway and somebody that likes snippies? This vanilla is amazing. Mode. <laughs> I don't like anything vanilla, but this is amazing. Okay, <laughs> what's that chocolate mode? Uh, hey, 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 let's go. <laughs> uh, that's just off this thing picture, the chocolate mode. <laughs> um, this is, a, it's amazing. I adore this feature. I, whenever you're on Snippies, say you're, like you said, at work, on the subway, at church, praising Jesus, you, you need to turn on your, your vanilla mode so that people that are around you are not exposed to the things that you are exposed to so i i'm usually very unapologetic about people seeing what's on my phone i do have my privacy mode but no if you're looking that hard at my screen then you deserve to see what you see number one but like i said there are spaces and there are times when a little bit more discretion is in the best interest of everyone around so i think that this is a great idea kudos to St sniffies they are immaculate i i <laughs> i have a lot of fun on snippies even just looking i have a lot of fun on snippies so thank they're you, leading snippies. the pact in many they ways are. on forget the apps if you will because it's not technically an app at all yeah. it's a platform that you go on and i think they built it in a way that you can be anonymous when you want to you can show all of you when you're ready to there's premium Levels I lead with all can. of me, by the way. <laughs> you what? I lead with all of me, by the way. <laughs> okay. And, and yeah, I mean, I really like the platform. I tend to do meet more people on Sniffies, probably because I'm a, of an age where I like cruising more. I like cruising bars. And it's the closest thing online to, it's like, they picked up the baton where Craigslist left off, where you can yes. meet people on Craigslist. And it's a little bit of cruising. Like I like cruise bars like the Eagle and places back in the day like Paddles and where the apps are totally online and you just get a lot more ghosting. I think this is a little bit more real upfront and what cruising is really like. And so oh, yeah. I'm a big fan of it and i love how they have these iterations of different you know if you're gonna call it vanilla mode fine i'm here for that um we might not be having vanilla sex when we meet up but <laughs> definitely we can not call it vanilla mode if that makes you happy and yeah i'm here I get for a, it 
Me too. I get a lot more hits on Sniffies. I think it's because I'm leading with my dick instead of my face, which looks very innocent. But my my dip, my penis does not look innocent. It looks like it will split you in half. So, oh I get, my <laughs> goodness! <laughs> I get not a lot. Hold back. I get some play on Sniffies, honey. I'll tell you that much right now. <laughs> And for that, we will do your Drag Race segment, I promise. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. Bryce says, okay, let's all agree that vanilla tastes much better than chocolate. Girl, no. Wait, what? Sorry, baby. <laughs> did I read that comment? I... <laughs> okay, that was not my statement. Anyways, um, okay. I love this next topic because it's a brand new book that I have to have on my coffee table. I'm a huge coffee table book fan. I think when you, I lo also love to host parties and this brand new book is all about our queer icons. It's eight images, gay icons guide to life is what it's called. The gay icons guide to life. Get into it. It won't come out until early April but it is actually um, written by Michael Justin. The author highlights inspiring and entertainment quotes alongside adorable illustrations from the icons we love most. And from people like George Takei and Beyonce to Betty White and RuPaul to David Bowie and Madonna, these icons are forever near and dear to our hearts. And these quotes are a beautiful reminder of why we have claimed them from our own. And Cody, I'll read a couple of them, but I do think growing up as a young questioning person about my sexuality and ultimately I came out as gay my icons really helped me just take a stance on life they helped me on so many ways they still help me um in so many ways and we can talk about what an icon is and what they represent and why they're so important to us but let me just read you a couple of quotes from the people featured like dolly parton She's quoted as saying, God, I have a great relationship, but we both see other people. Okay. Um, oh, Judy Garland is quoted as saying, never be a second rate version of someone else. Be a first wait, be a first rate version of yourself. I really like that. I, we love Leslie Jordan. And he said, I fell Aww. out of the womb and landed in my mother's high heels. Who couldn't love that? And this so one really particular that I I'm a huge huge Elizabeth Taylor fan and she's quoted as saying you just do it you're you, you force yourself to get up you force yourself to put on uh, uh, one foot before the other and god damn it if you refuse to let it get to you you fight you you cry, you curse, then you go without business of living. That's how I have done it. There's no other way. Sorry, I don't have my classes today, but I can read this next one. And it's by RuPaul. And this is amazing. I kind of have this mentality that says everything will work out in the end. And if it's not working out, it's not the end. Isn't that brilliant? <laughs> I am getting that tattooed on my butt, I think. That is oh. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> this is the end right here <laughs> who were some of your icons growing up why and why do you think this book is so important i love i think this book is so important because it shows that even as queer people we're we still have so many people to look up to and i feel like being because i feel like being queer growing up it, we, it was very hush-hush. It was very not talked about. But still, yet and still, we still are able to bubble to the surface as far as a community is concerned and relate to each other. And there's so many people that have paved the way for us. So I'm so happy for this book. I plan on getting it because the illustrations are gorgeous. So I, when it comes out, is it already out, Steve? No, not yet. April okay. 1st, I believe. Yeah. April 1st. When it comes out April 1st, we will be first in line for us to get two copies of it. As far as my queer icons go, I stand Diana Janet Jackson. Ross. <laughs> oh my gosh. I almost didn't say Diana Ross. Uh, 
How we've dare we've I? been talking about mahogany with you over the last several episodes, <laughs> girl. <laughs> I, me and mahogany go back like uh, ice cream and cake, baby, because I love me some Diana Ross. She has been uh, an instrumental motivation in my life as far as being a musician, being just fantastic and she's such a diva and she's such a a kind person in my opinion so her janet jackson because of course she is the goddess and then george michael and george michael because he was unafraid to speak about sex and sexuality at a, in the 80s and it was it was just so wonderful and pivotal for me as a young queer person growing up so i i always stand george michael and his voice is I seen him live in concert, baby. It was fantastic. One of the best concerts of my life. And I've seen a lot. So what about you? Who are your queer icons? It's no surprise that strong women are a huge part of many of us of a certain age, I think, that have had such an impact. I think straight men were not a... We were teased, many of us, and we were... Um, put in positions where we were made to feel like less than by a lot of straight men. And so strong women, I think, are have been a huge role model from my mother mm -hmm. to people. Of course, Madonna is a huge because she's been sassy. She's talked back. And the things that I didn't have when I was growing up that I ultimately... That's why I have this show, because I can talk back and I can be sassy and I can be who I want to be and I can be unapologetically real with my sexuality. And a lot of it has to do with my role model, Madonna, uh, Janet Jackson, of, of course, the race stuff back. Rhythm Nation had a huge oh, yeah. impact on me back in the day. I remember taking a 30 minute drive four days a week with my father driving to gymnastic practice. And he's like, again, we're going to hear that rhythm nation. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> we are. And, and it followed control. Like and dance. it, because it was all about taking control. Like she says in all of her music and all of knowing about my culture later on, she didn't know it at the time, but rhythm nation taught me to, learn more about my Mexican heritage roots that oh, wow. we didn't necessarily grow up with growing up, even though we were proud Mexican Americans. Yeah. That album had such a huge impact on me. And there's a lot of other people that had impacts, but those are some of the main two and more. Elizabeth Taylor, I got to meet her and such an AIDS advocate. I mean, that, and that does not say it to the degree of what Elizabeth Taylor delivered, not to mention her beautiful beauty and what she delivered in her acting, mm. but Elizabeth Taylor was a huge impact. And honestly, when a lot of strong women have been a real role, have been real role models for me to be a strong person that yeah. the man I am today and I salute all of them and I want this book because I think yay and and it just acknowledges our community on what we are built on and who we didn't always have role models represented so we had to find them and yeah. find them on our own so yes love that I love Elizabeth Taylor cat on a hot tin roof that is oh. a masterclass in divadom I can I love her I love all of these the, all these people of course RuPaul we we could go on and on and on we can continue talking about this all night but yeah and I have a couple Elizabeth okay. Taylor movies in my repertoire that I want to have you over there's one Let's do it. that she is so diva there's a couple of them there's mo a ton of them and oh yeah I'm like living for her so yeah um can't wait uh, Absolutely. Okay. Well, we have to move on to um, your topic that I wanted to make <laughs> room for, and it's Drag Race. And I, they're, what season are they currently in? Are they in season 15? 16. Wait, wait. Is it 15 or 16? I think it's 16. Okay. 
trick question for you. I didn't mean to. Um, <laughs> I, we need to have a drag race moment on this show, and I'm watching the current season. It's really good. And it is 16. Okay, topic number yeah. one, we had to talk about Mirage, who sadly was eliminated in last week's episode. Mirage is from Vegas, and she is called the Swifter of Vegas, and she's so brilliant with her floor work and everything else. I love her. She's indigenous, and she had an awful and an emotional gut-wrenching elimination, season 16, just we saw that right now where she didn't she failed to win the lip sync contest partly because she didn't know the song of Cher. i didn't even know this song by it's Cher. Me. <laughs> yeah do you know the song i have i do not know this song i was one right it was yeah i'm more familiar with Cher, like gypsies tramps and thieves and okay more, yeah more of the 90s stuff i'm more familiar with i didn't I'm, know this I've, one either and true sure fans are going to hate us for this i know, I know right i, I didn't want to say it out loud i was like <laughs> when i tell our mutual friend from la he's going to be like what um oh, really? but she did not know the lyrics that well and subsequently didn't win the that that in the contest and was sent home but it was really her being sent home that she I don't think I've ever seen somebody get the news that they are shot um sachet away Shantae away that she broke down and it was that ugly cry and I think I was telling you in my in our meeting that I the only time I could relate to that kind of ugly breakdown was when I recently was when I when I was talking to the vet for my dog and I was a little bit confused, like, well, we can do this right for my dog, Mr. Chow. And, but, and ultimately when I realized it was like, no, there is nothing you can do. I on the phone had the most loudest, ugliest outburst cry that just came oh. from somewhere deep, deep down in I, that was, I couldn't explain it. I couldn't control it. And it was like Mirage had that same moment. Did you think, what did you think of that? What did you think of Mirage? And have you ever felt that deep down like pain? Uh, my heart went out to Mirage. I felt for her so viscerally. I think that she, first of all, she would have, if she would have known the words to that lip sync, she would have murdered Geneva Carr because she was twirling. She was doing her clacks that she does with her stripper heels. She she would have stayed hands down, but she didn't know the words. So you, that's part of the lip sync. You have to know the words. So my heart went out to her because she probably should have stayed, but she didn't, she didn't meet the, the criteria for her to stay in the, in, in the competition, unfortunately. As far as me having <laughs> a breakdown, I've had, I break down all the time. I just went through <laughs> a breakup. I have been crying for about six months now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I've, I've definitely had those moments that I cry uncontrollably. I'm just an emotional person, so I'm going to be crying frequently. <laughs> I cry in movies. I cry in on commercials i'm just i'm just an emotional person so i, I but, but in uh, as far as uncontrollable crying death is probably the only time that i have cried that uncontrollably it just it just always hits me so like right to my gut you know without sharing too much i've had people pass away and i definitely gone through that so I, my heart goes out to mirage because i know that feeling of wanting something so bad and then having it all dashed away so I, my heart went out there oh the only other time that i saw uh, a queen cry like that on rupaul's drag race is pangina heels on uk versus the world and she bawled we had to watch that one too i have wow okay I'm, I'll come over. Well, I'll bring a bottle of wine and we'll watch her. Okay. Because she went, she cried on the stage and then she went backstage and you could just hear her sobbing from oh. the front of the stage. And it was, it's heart wrenching. Oh, yes. 
Yes. Okay, staying on Drag Race with you because I'm indulging you and I love it. Um, and I so love fun. it too. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, recently, uh, we all know Bob the Drag Queen, who is on tour, of course, with Madonna right now, and who is a season, I believe it's a season seven winner of Drag Race. She won season that? eight. Oh, my God. How do I know these things? <laughs> Thank you. Well, recently um, on his podcast, uh, Bob the Drag Queen was talking about the recent share um, he was talking about the controversy of uh, with Monet Exchange, correct, mm -hmm. on his they, podcast, they... Sibling Rivalry. Yep. And Jane, um, plain Jane, who's on the current season, won the talent show in the season's second episode with a comical performance of her song, Burger Finger. If you watched it, I thought it was funny, um, but I didn't, like, love it. And <laughs> I'm sure... Plain Jane is ruffling a little bit of feathers because she's super sassy and making a lot of people angry if you're watching it right now. But uh, essentially, um, Bob the Drag Queen said, Plain Jane's burger finger was trying harder to be stupid than she actually is. I don't like it the direction that drag race is going he says it feels like at one point in time someone said you're just so stupid and we love that you're such a dummy and now lots of girls it feels like they're forcing themselves to be stupid <laughs> don't hold back and um well you can imagine that was one thing it's their opinion he has bob the drag queen has had this show forever and they're allowed to comment on shows i think it's like if you're a contestant like you should be happy that they're talking about you right oh, yeah. but plain jane took immediately to clap back and said mm -hmm, no i get that people can't compute me being both sexy as fuck and a clown who performed this number well before drag race but this take is tired she wrote on instagram and she said, everything I did on the show was authentic to who I am as a drag performer. If it wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to set it so fiercely, but go off. Well, it didn't stop Bob the Drag Queen, who's been on tour and said, girl, shut up. <laughs> and a lot of <laughs> former contestants, as well as people that follow the show, said, do not come for a... Uh, somebody like a Bob the Drag Queen so early on because it won't bode well for you. What do you say, Cody, on A, the perform... Yeah, let me get the T. What do you say on what Bob was saying about Burger Finger? And what do you... It was plain Jane overreacting and should she not be clapping back so soon in her career? First of all, and I had a couple of drinks, so I'm going to be extremely honest. <laughs> Plain Jane is just mean, number one. And she is. Number two, and it's not even funny. She doesn't have the vernacular that she needs in order to come for a Bob the Drag Queen because maybe she is stupid. She's sexy, but maybe she is stupid because she, the, from the reads that she's giving in Untucked, it's not giving smart. That's what it's not it's giving. though. I, would... <laughs> I mean, if you want to fuck a it's dumb mean type. bitch. <laughs> read. Now, see, that was smart, and I appreciate it. And I'm going to give you your Let's gold be star real. for the day, Mama. You thought okay? about it. Let's be real. You thought about it. I know you, I know you too well. <laughs> you definitely do. And I'm not. <laughs> and I'm going to. Now they're going to deny. Or... Uh, exactly. I'm going to silently agree, but I'm not going to let you know that I agree. <laughs> you just need but... like to tie up the mouth. <laughs> oh Yeah, definitely. Uh, always. I always need to tie up my mouth. Um, but yeah, I think that Bob is very, he's super smart. So he also said in one of his interviews on Sibling Rivalry, because I, I subscribe to his Patreon, him and Monet Exchange. I, I'm Timo Nation all day. Um, <laughs> I love it. But I, he also said that they want to, he would like to see Smart come back into drag because a lot of intelligent winners have, have gone on to win drag race. Bob is one of them. Bianca Del Rio, 
uh, Raja is super smart. Uh, so many, so many queens. Sasha Kobe is very intelligent, and she didn't have to like dumb herself down. When Plain Jane did Burger Finger, it looked like a Jimbo ripoff. Now, but it's authentic to Jimbo, but it did not. It felt a little bit forced as far as when Jane Plain Jane did it. So I can't. I I yeah. totally agree with Bob. I think that Burger Finger was not the moment that everybody thought it was. Maybe she, maybe RuPaul thought it was funny, so she won. But can I weigh in? Please go right ahead, darling. I can't wait to hear so, this. So as somebody that is, you know, I'm not a super fan like you are, and mm -hmm. often, you know, some of the early episodes I'm always into, and I appreciate what they put out there. I think that, you know, at this point, there's going to be re reiterations of performances out there. I mean, it's they're on season 16. So yeah. I just think you're going to see, you know, what what did they say uh, in Shakespeare? There's only so many storylines out there and everything is just a reiteration of it. This is probably no different in the drag world um, where... I think that Bob may have a point where it might seem silly. Some, so I do agree with him in some of the episode after episode. Sometimes I'm like, okay, I can, I'm definitely looking up my Sniffy's account when they're doing <laughs> some of these sort of what I think silly and I'm not really into, but I have a like a side eye on it, but I'm not paying attention that much. That's me. So maybe it is going in a certain direction like that. Is Bob the drag queen a huge entity right now? Yes. And do I think that Jane, plain Jane should just like be happy that you're being talked about at this point and who cares? Yes. And if you are being talked about, just roll with it. Don't clap back at this point when you haven't established yourself as bob has and monet exchange has it's like be happy that they're talking about you because if they're talking about you that's putting you in a greater sphere and let's wait and see how you actually do in the end and we have a lot more shows to go and i just think calm down before you come in like a shark so early on and that's where i weigh in it's just it's not that serious and just let them talk about you. There's probably been a lot of other people that have done versions of what you've already done. Just it's the nature of art and it's not that serious. So, yeah. I hear you and I, I can see where you're coming from. The only thing I disagree with is that <clears throat> this is probably really good for plain Jane, her being in an argument with somebody of the stature of Bob the Drag Queen because it's only going to improve her her visibility. And she's already known for being a combative queen. I think that's a good word for, for plain Jane, <laughs> combative. So I think that if she kept quiet, it would seem disingenuous, her behavior on the actual show. So I think that this is, I think her clapping back at Bob is the best thing she could have done, honestly. I think so, but I just think let them talk about you at this point yeah, and see how you ultimately do in the end. And to have Bob say, shut up, girl. It's just like <laughs> hilarious. Iconic. And, and yes. she, she only had to say three words for her to come back at, at, at plain Jane smarter than plain Jane could come at her. So I don't know. Bob wins for me, hands down. Exactly. Well, let's give some advice. And we have so many that we can choose from. I'm going to let you pick the one oh if you're goodness. ready to do it. But if you're not ready, I could pick Cody. We will let's have a couple. Do uh, uh, so many people ghost after what seems to be a good hookup? Let's do that one. Okay. Um, yes. I like that. Um, let me get my glasses on so I can actually read tonight. Um, okay, so it was entitled with so many get people ghost after what seems to be a good hookup. Hey there, guys. I've been having a weird problem lately, and I'm curious what you guys think. I have been having this problem where after a hookup with people, they end up ghosting or blocking me. Like all of my pictures are recent. I have mostly ones that are at at less flattering so it doesn't seem like false advertising so it's not 
only like flawless selfie angles, lighting mainly. So they wait, this is not making sense to me, Cody. Am I not reading it right? <laughs> it's making sense to me. me. You want me to read it? Uh, yes. So basically, said, you know, when people read write stuff like this, grammar is not always, and I'm trying to read it grammar wise. Can you? Like, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So this person, when they go to a hookup, they are before they go to the hookup, they are sending out pictures that are not necessarily their perfect pictures. So the people aren't disappointed when they get to the hookup. Have you done that before? Is that something that it, it's even even crosses your mind? Sending out your your not your seven out of ten picture instead of your ten out of ten picture. Oh no, honey. I only <laughs> um, twelve it's out the, of Oh no. Huh? <laughs> no, 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 no. I oh <laughs> it's the oh no honey for me that was fantastic i loved it oh no 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 <laughs> so uh, maybe that's why this doesn't so what it, it didn't connect so basically no. he's going to these hookups and then they are ghosting him they're deleting the 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 text thread from they're blocking them on grinder or what have you or sniffies or have they already Scruff. had a sexual they had a sexual encounter and then they go to the they have sex and then they get blocked immediately after they're like the last guy was straight so he understands that one but what is the the problem why is are all these people blocking them after they go have a hookup after they go have sex basically well let me use an example then that relates exactly to this so i on sniffies the other day and i was telling you in our meeting so now that I get it even more, I had somebody that sent over their images and it was Monday after our show or pre-recorded show. I thought I, I, I liked what I saw. He looked sexy. He had, was from LA. He had just checked into a local ho hotel. I went over there. He said he wanted to fuck me and I was all in. I said it. he had brought up, because in my profile, I said I was also into feet, although I wasn't saying that with him. And he said, oh, you're into feet too. That's great. Well, when I got there, he opened the door and he wasn't necessarily the way he looked in his pictures. And I was, okay. But we ended up having a good time and he ended up being into my feet. Somehow he interpreted that the feet thing was he was into my feet, which was fine. But it was, I think I told you in our meeting that it was fine. It was, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed for what it was. He wasn't like the guy that I thought I was going to meet, but he was good enough. But at the end of it, I was like, fine, that's it. Well, I was looking on my snippies earlier today, and what I saw was yesterday, he wanted to repeat the experience again. I didn't block him, but I didn't respond back because to me, it was kind of a lukewarm sexual experience for me. He wasn't really what I thought he was going to be, and I just ignored it. Mm -hmm. I guess ghosted him. Yeah. So... My whole thing is, and I don't know if this is answering the question, is if you, I like to represent who I really am in pictures and representation ahead of time, because if not, some people can still go on with the sexual experience, but to ask for a second, third time, if you're not really what you said you were, that would... Listen, I was horny. I did it <laughs> with you, but you didn't really look like you presented yourself. That's why I like to present myself the way I, the best I can look. And I work and I try and keep myself looking the best I can so that when you see me, I'm pretty much close to the pictures and what I put in my advertisement so that you are getting, this is, you're getting this. Yeah. I hear that. And I'm still laughing at, oh, no, honey. I That is, <laughs> it's going to live on in, I, all night long. I'm going to be like, we'll put oh, that in no the promo. <laughs> <laughs> it was fantastic. Okay. All right. But past that, I see what you're saying. And I totally agree. Maybe, because it was, if it was one person, I could see that perhaps they, the, uh, 
that person might have had something that's going on in their life that led them to to block that person. You never know. That person can have a husband. You never know what could happen. They might have to delete their profile. All of the things. There could be a million different reasons. But this man had five people block him on whatever app it was. And it was, that seems a little excessive. So you need to evaluate what it is about you that you're doing with these people that is turning them and off. Blocking is a strong blocking your strong girl where i so if we were just take my example i didn't block the person because i don't need to block them they're only yeah. here for a minute in time i just saw their hey i want i want to touch your feet again right have your feet wrap around me is what he said i'm like i'm the one that's into feet i'm the one that's into feet why are you into my feet although i like my feet but i mean and I was, I just didn't respond. That was my version of ghosting, but I didn't block anybody. I mean, yeah. So I will tell you that I went on a hookup on Snippies. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> that where I went to, to go to the hookup and I went to the apartment and it was, it just smelled. I was like, okay, I'm still going to go through with this. And I, he was hot. And we went down to his room and he didn't have any lube. Which I, I heard when okay. you are a good host, you bring the lube and we talked about, <laughs> we talked about <laughs> and then I went to go eat his ass and it was not it wasn't fresh, honey. I, that's all I can say. Okay, well, that's a whole different scenario. Girl, I ran out of there faster than the flash. It was I was like grease lightning. I was like, okay, so I'm going to go now because <laughs> it was an immediate boner killer. So I can see that, that maybe this is something that he needs to look into. Maybe it's a hygiene issue. Maybe it's something <clears throat> that he's doing. Maybe he's using a little teeth when he sucks a dick. I don't know. But I know that he needs to figure it out because five people is excessive. That's excessive. And to your point where that didn't add up when you went down on his ass. Oh, I mean, man. the one thing that I can give credit to the guy, because it was, uh, for the most part, a, a fine experience. Not the words you want to use for a hookup, <laughs> but it was it was fine. But we both went back and forth with, um, okay, I'm. how much time do you need? I said, well, I said I need to c clean up or mm -hmm. rinse off. And he said the same thing, good too. Host. Mm -hmm. And those were common terms that you often use in hookup scenarios. And he was perfectly clean. I was perfectly clean. That wasn't an issue. So, you know, those, I hear all of that. It just, and it was fine. It just, it, and I think in my situation, it just wasn't worth blocking him. Yeah, um, I didn't block just, this guy either. No, I mean, go over. I'd be like, take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And lastly, I think we have enough time for Thirst Trap, which Straight Up Gay Porn is doing again. And this week they asked 18 gay porn stars who took the best photo. There's some really good, sexy ones, as always. I don't know where to begin, but our job on an audio podcast is to descriptively, vividly describe who gets our pick. Do you have one that really took your fancy? Oh, yes. First of all, there's a man named Cody on here. And I almost oh. voted for Cody because I want to have sex with somebody with my name because I want to scream my name at somebody when I'm having sex with them. <laughs> but I chose instead Kyle. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but Kyle Verong, because he's so Ooh. delicious. It is a mirror selfie and he's completely naked with like a modern wood paneling behind him. And it, he just looks so innocent and he's completely naked from head to toe in, a, in this mirror selfie. And that dick is redonkulous. It looks like a monster that's coming out of his, his midsection. So I, that was my pick for this week. There were some redonkulous ones on this list this week and we're starting off with a bang, but I have to go with a guy that goes by Brown, Brown Guy. And oh. he's literally at a urinal with a sweatshirt on. So it's just, he has glasses on, but he's so sexy Latino guy. And I love his glasses. I love his expression on his face. 
and his dick looks yummy. But when I looked, because I often cheat and go on to there, I really liked his sexiness and he's kind of mysterious. I love his body and I don't know. Brown guy gets my pick of the week. In fact, I'm going to vote. And that's what we encourage you to do. If Like if you're going to do this, play along with us, vote. And I'm going to vote right now because we can't just play this game without voting. And let me, brown guy, I just voted and voted and I am doing, I'm in the lower place, but that's okay. How is your guy doing? It's still really hot. Kayo is number two. Got it. Got it. I love and it. And Cody oh is my. number one. Hey, as you should be. <laughs> Thank you, darling. <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh, you can always follow. This has been so much fun. And um, we've just scraped the surface. We have so much to get into. We have some special guests coming up this new year that you don't want to miss on Tags Live. And we will be bringing them on, on this platform. So stick with us. You can always follow my co-host, Cody. He's a life coach. Follow him on Instagram at KMD Coaching or his personal account, which is very sexy. Follow that on Instagram at Mr. Maurice. I love saying that, Mr. Maurice. Yeah, Follow me on now. the gram. <laughs> Follow me on the gram. I am underscore Steve V. I am underscore Steve V. Of course, I have a OnlyFans account that new material coming out every week. I see you guys coming through. Thank you so much for supporting it. It is OnlyFans.com forward slash Sexy Poppy Steve V. Sexy Poppy Steve V. And in the meantime, and we thank our virtual audience so much, but in the meantime, continue having Cody Hot Gay Sex. Sex. X. Yes, lovely people. That should be a promo, us saying that together. Ooh, <laughs> right? <laughs>